In this video, I wanna talk about what is time-lapse photography, a little bit about the fascinating history of how it's developed and how time-lapse actually helped people realize they can change the sex of plants. Also talk a little bit about how time-lapses work in general terms, and lastly, give you some examples and inspiration for any of your upcoming projects. So let's dive in. Time-lapse photography is a film technique at which the still frames to make a video are captured at a significantly slower frequency to create a video that looks like time is sped up. Normal film is made to mimic what our eyes naturally see, which is about 24 frames per second. The frame being another word for a photograph. Basically, a normal video we watch is typically made up of 24 individual photos per second. So filmmakers and storytellers alike have found that if they took less photos per second, they'd be able to see time move much quicker. This was done to help us see and learn about processes that move much slower than our eyes can observe. We might not be able to watch a mushroom grow and die and see just how fast the sun and stars are moving through the sky because we just can't stay long enough in one spot to see that much change. But with time lapse, we can slow down how often we take a photo, allowing us to see how time has an impact on what we're looking at. In short, time lapse is basically like having a time lapse with your camera. Okay, so let's dive into the history of time lapse photography. Since the definition of a time lapse is a series of photos taken over time to show change, the very first recorded time lapse is a bit up for debate and interpretation. But if we go back in time, the very first video ever made might be considered a time lapse by that definition. If we remember, the first video clip was actually to settle the debate on if all horses' hooves were in air at once or how many stayed on the ground while the horse ran. And to do that, Edward Moybridge in 1872 rigged up a bunch of cameras and when the horse ran past, it would take photos. The result was a series of photos that when played like a flip book, it resulted in the video of the horse running and they found out, yeah, all the horse hooves do indeed leave the ground at the same time. In my opinion, it's kind of a weak example of a time lapse, but hey. Another one that I was able to find information about is in 1874, and it might be more true to the time lapse definition we use today. It's Pierre Jules Cesar Hansen. <laughs> That's a mouthful. He did this passage, Artificial de Venus sur le Soleil. I'm 100% sure I'm saying all that wrong. This is only five seconds long, and you can see it's the passage of Venus over time, which is definitely more closer to the true definition. Other people that get credited with inventing the technique here and there are George Melier, which the first uses of time lapse in a motion picture, uh, Carrefour de la Opera in 1897, but I can't find a single copy of it anywhere. Uh, another one is F. Percy Smith, who did the first time lapse of All Flower, but like George, I also can't find any copies of it. The first one that I can find an example is the demolishing and building of the Star Theater in 1902. I love this because it's really quite creative and impressive. First, it was done by taking a photo every four minutes for eight hours a day. They knew the building was gonna be demolished, so they thought it would be fun to see them taking the building apart brick by brick. And it was meant to be looped in reverse once you finished playing it. So then you could see it being built and destroyed. Hey, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm and I could use that. All right, so now let's talk about one of the most important figures in the time-lapse world. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, that person that's pioneered this technique more than anyone is Dr. John Ott. This guy is super fascinating. In the 1930s, he was a banker and he got into time-lapse photography of pants as a hobby, was building greenhouses, cameras, automated electric motion control systems for, for photographing the plants, intricate light rigs to introduced certain colors and invented so many of the film techniques that we use and know today. One thing that I found absolutely interesting was that he discovered that by using different lights and different conditions, he actually could change the sex of plants, which if I'm being honest, I didn't even know that was a thing that was possible, but he, he really is a pioneer in the time-lapse world and he's worth you know reading his books and learning more about him. So modern time-lapse today. Today, time-lapse photography is accessible to almost anybody. You can do it on your smartphone, a GoPro camera, DSLRs are commonly all things that are used for capture time-lapses. Smartphones often have automatic time-lapse settings, while more professional setups involving DSLRs require taking a series of photos and then editing them using software like LR time-lapse, Lightroom, DaVinci, you name it. Time-lapse photography serves two main purposes, to show the passage of time, and to reveal processes that are not easily observable in real time. Common subjects include things like clouds, crowds, traffic, sunrises, sunsets, construction projects, plant growth, celestial movements, natural phenomena like aurora borealis. <laughs> when shooting a time lapse, it's really important to keep the camera steady and address potential issues like flicker, which can occur when the camera settings change. Day to night or night to day time lapses, also known as holy grail of time lapse, 
are particularly a challenge because of all of the changing lighting conditions. Timeless photography has also given rise to a lot of different subgenres and techniques within the field. For example, hyperlapses are a time lapse where you're moving the camera in between each shot, resulting in a more dynamic, fast-paced video where you kind of bring the audience through the scene with you. We have hyperzoom where you zoom in between different camera angles, flow motion where you use time lapse, hyperlapse, and video to kind of make the camera seem like the subject, pixelation, which is a stop motion technique where you animate people in between each frame, and then there's also Google Earth time lapse. Uh, and there's all kinds of other creative possibilities. In conclusion, time-lapse photography is a fascinating technique that allows us to visualize the passage of time and observe slow processes in a condensed and visually compelling way. With advancements in technology, it's become more accessible and easier than ever to do this, offering filmmakers and content creators a wide range of creative possibilities. That's been really exciting to see. All right, well, that's it for this video. You made it to the end, so why won't you be my friend and subscribe?